Morning, morning, morning everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone's up in front. This is episode 214 of Tottenham Walks. Do me a favour guys, smash the like button for me. If you wouldn't mind, smash the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. Guys, it's Saturday. Excuse me. It is the last day of domestic football. The FA Cup final takes place this afternoon, as does the Scottish Cup final, which is your potential last chance to see Ange Postacoglu in competitive football, potentially before he moves to Tottenham. For all the Celtic fans that have been on the channel over the last few days, coming in with your uh, passionate responses to the idea that Postacoglu might be coming to Tottenham, I'm not saying it will happen. I personally have fallen for the man. I love how passionate you guys are and have been. I've never seen such a wave of devotion from a fan base towards a manager quite like this one. It gives me all of the signals that I needed to get over the line from sitting on the fence to whether I wanted a guy like him in or out. I'm very much in favor of it now, purely because I feel like the, the things that Tottenham need more than anything else to get the fans behind a new movement that we can all believe in is not only attractive football, but a squad that has more belief in themselves, more confidence. And from what the Celtic fans have been writing in the comments, plus from the research that you know I've done into the manager and plus what I've read and heard about elsewhere on different channels, like with Dave from the Irish Hotspur and Jack's video, which is a, a wonderful insight into the man. I believe that, that he can offer those sorts of things. You know, I've just come off of Sava's 24-hour charity stream. If you haven't checked it out, get over there. I'm sure if you've been on YouTube at all in the last 24 hours, you would have seen it. It's been going for 24 hours. They are the rules of a 24-hour charity stream. And if you haven't donated, please, if you have any spare change, get over there and uh, it's for a great cause and all of the demonstrations to ensure that there's no concerns around where the money might go pending recent, you know, uh, events in the community have been any of those concerns have been allayed uh, the money is going direct to the British Heart Foundation so good worthy cause great stream and a great effort from Sabra and everybody else that helped him out throughout the, uh, the last 24 hours anyway during that show lots of different conversations back and forth but towards the end Sabra and I and a few others were having a conversation about just exactly how much squad overhaul is necessary um, over the, the summer in order to get Tottenham you know, somewhat competitive, back onto the the the, pro, the progression march once again. You know, Sava kind of intimated that he thinks that there's only five or six players in the entire squad that he has any faith in, and that everybody else can disappear. Obviously, he wasn't suggesting that all has to happen at once, but that's the level of um, uh, of strength that he sees, or lack thereof, that he sees within Tottenham squad. I don't share that same level of uh, pessimism. I think that for this summer specifically, Tottenham need five or six players into the team and Tottenham could look an incredibly different outfit if the rest of the squad were to have more confidence. And I think a manager like Ange Postacoglu could come in and get more juice from the squeeze of the squad that we currently have. The players this season that have had disappointing campaigns, Deki, Sun, Bissouma, Emerson Royale, at least for the first half or three quarters of the season, um, not that I want to see him anymore, but people like Hugo Lloris or Eric Dyer or Ben Davies, Clement Longley, when there's been moments where mistakes have happened and heads have dropped, I feel like the confidence has been ripped out of that team, but the quality still remains to some extent in a lot of the players that we now look at with a different lens than we did last, or the season before last when we finished fourth. Confidence is a, is a, is a ridiculously important element uh, to any kind of endeavour in life, but especially team sports. And I feel like we are sorely lacking in that department and someone like Postacoglu can come in and offer us not only attractive football, but a mechanism and a, and a manner in which we can get those players believing in themselves, believing in the team and believing in the mission once again. That's not to say that we don't need new players, we absolutely do. And so I'm just gonna spend a couple of seconds talking about some of the transfer news that is emerging today that wasn't mentioned yesterday and that hasn't been seen before too much. One of the news stories out there is about a goalkeeper. A goalkeeper is, of course, a player, a position that I think everyone knows we need. Hugo Lloris 
is likely to have his contract torn up and to return to France after a long stint at the club that kind of finished on a bit of a sour note following his half-time substitution against Newcastle in the 6-1 humiliation. Haven't seen him since. Highly doubt we'll see him again in a Tottenham shirt. So who's going to replace him? Well, obviously everyone wants David Raya. That is everyone's top of their wish list or most people's top of their wish list. Unfortunately, he's going to be very sought after. Whether or not the price tag for him is 25 million or 40 million, such as the, the spectrum of which we don't know uh, where that line lies currently. However, we know Manchester United are looking for a replacement for David De Gea. We know that Chelsea are looking for a, a new goalkeeper. Today, it emerges that Aston Villa are also looking for someone to potentially have to replace Martinez. So Tottenham won't be alone in the pursuit of him. And so they may have to have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. And one of those names that's emerged this morning is Andre Onana from Inter Milan. Although you may remember him from Ajax fame from the 2019 Champions League semi-final. He put in worldy performances during that second leg. Obviously, it wasn't quite enough to get Ajax through, but he did put in uh, a superb performance. One that I remember very clearly, some of those uh, ridiculous agile based saves and I think that those talents that we saw on that night have also been demonstrated throughout the season for Inter Milan where he currently plies his trade. He's had a wonderful couple of years at Inter and he's a player that Inter Milan may look to cash in on this summer. Rumours are that he could be available from anywhere from 25 million to 50 million euros depending on how Inter Milan value him and how desperate they are to raise money. As I say, his skill set, I love his distribution, it's brilliant, his communication is key, the way he uh, kind of handles the back line from behind. He's uh, always in communication with the likes of Bastoni and De Vrij and whoever else is in that kind of back four, four Inter or back five for Inter. Um, a very, very, very uh, gifted goalkeeper who can get down uh, and get across the balls that uh, most goalkeepers who don't have that same agility in their physical attributes locker could do or couldn't do. For me, I'd be happy to see him come in if Tottenham were to go in that direction. I do, however, think that there are other options within the Premier League that Tottenham can turn to should David Rea uh, not want to choose Tottenham if we do pursue, make a pursuit in that direction. I like the goalkeeper Saar from Wolves. You know, David, uh, the Irish Hotspur, and I were talking about uh, Bizunu from Southampton last night. Dave is waxes lyrical about this guy so much, um, and I tend to agree that his distribution again is, is second class. Uh, sorry, is first class, second to none for someone of his age and his temperament is incredibly, um, in incredibly impressive. He's also going through the ropes of the learning curve of being a Premier League goalkeeper. But to Dave's point, you know, in a few years' time, he will have a seventy million pound valuation, and maybe just maybe it would be uh, a benefit to get in before that kind of uh, acceleration in his valuation takes place. Apart from that, guys, the only other story I want to bring to you is a story we did mention in yesterday's live stream with Dave. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. I love talking with Dave about all things football. What seemed like 20 minutes was in fact an hour and 50 on the show. We went through all of the different ramifications of whether Postacoglu does or doesn't come into Tottenham as the next managerial search. We talked about uh, maybe Marco Silva emerging as the next manager target. Luis Enrique's name just won't disappear. But one of the things that I barely touched on right at the end of the video, which I intended to, to talk about throughout, was a player called Victor Nelson, a Scandinavian centre-back who currently plies his trade at Galatasaray. And this was a story that actually slipped through the net for me. I didn't see it at the time, but about five or six days ago, Galatasaray reports in the media suggested that Tottenham had actually agreed a deal in principle for Victor Nelson, the centre-back, and that the Galatasaray president was in London and that had spoken with um, either third parties or Tottenham-specific heads of departments within recruitment and that the player uh, personal terms had also been agreed and that we're just waiting for the official opening of the transfer window to announce the transfer. So I went and did some research. I used the Y Scout tool, and if you you must have heard me mention the Y Scout tool a hundred times by now, it's a brilliant, brilliant tool that is used by scouts, where you can look at any player you want and zone in on any individual department 
of that particular player's game. So in the case of a centre-back like Victor Nelson, you can just look at long passes or aerial duels or tackles or aggressiveness or um, ground duels, whatever it might be. And then you can just see a long, long list of chronologically ordered clips, 10 second clips from every game that they've played and every single incident where that particular department of his game has been demonstrated. And so you'll see the good, the bad and the ugly. And I started to look into Victor Nelson and one of the major takeaways was something that I would talk about his long balls, his long passes. And I haven't seen anything like it from any other defender that I've ever used the Y-Scout tool to analyze. Usually when you're looking at long passes from a defender, you'll see you know, a successful one, and then you'll see one that goes out into touch. You'll see one that's blocked by the defender. You'll see one that's headed away. Maybe the person, the intended target, wins the head of it, it doesn't go anywhere, the move breaks down. You'll see a variety of things. You'll see a couple of successfuls, several fails, a successful one, a failure, something in between, etc. With Victor Nelson, when I looked through his long pass history, I think I had to look down to about the 20th clip to be able to see one that wasn't successful. He's pinging 30, 40 yard passes into the channels or into the target man for Galatasaray and every single one, one after another, was successful. I've never seen it before. And so my main takeaway about this guy is that he is a ball playing centre back, Toby Alderweireld esque Really, really, really impressive with the ball at his feet, especially when he's looking to ping balls into the channel, which you can imagine in a system where we were to use that next season, someone like Sonny would be a major beneficiary. Someone like Deki could be a major beneficiary of, of that kind of ability, something we don't really have in high regard right now. Where I would critique him on the negative side is, I'd say he reminds me a little bit of Romero in the rashness. He has an over tendency to slide in unnecessarily to tackle players. You know the old phrase from the Italian goat, you know, uh, if you're, I think it was Maldini that said, if you're a defender and you're on the floor sliding in, then you already made a mistake. And I think Romero, we've seen this season, um, when the timing is wrong, you give away yellow cards and red cards, you give away sloppy free kicks. And then even if you don't give away the free kick, but you get it wrong, you're out of position and the, the players move beyond you. I feel like potentially you could make the same assertion about Victor Nelson. He does like to slide in quite a lot. A very aggressive player. He's fairly good in the air. I wouldn't say he's amazing in the air. I wouldn't say he was uh, terrible. He's, he's, he's appropriately good for a guy of his size at aerial duels. And his positional play was pretty, pretty good. Uh, and he looks like he's a real good communicator as well. He's talking to the people around him. 26 years old. Allegedly, according to the reports, the deal was struck, has been struck for about 21 million euros, 22 million euros. Time will tell whether or not there's any truth to it. I would draw your attention back, guys, to a story that I dropped on this channel maybe four or five months ago now about the Besiktas goalkeeper, whose name escapes me right now. But that same kind of Turkish media was saying that that deal was agreed and done. Now, look. It might be that both of those stories are true and that both of those names are announced when the window officially opens in a week or two's time. But in all likelihood, the goalkeeping story from four months ago never materialized. It was outside of the January window, so this would be the first opportunity for it to actually be true, if it is true. But I don't think it is. I'm not entirely sure if the Victor Nelson story is true at all. But if it's true, then it's a player that I'm very happy to see come in. He looks like an absolute beast. Like I say, he's got a skill set that will be very much in demand for a Postacoglu system, I believe, where you can use that kind of aggressive long ball approach and put things into the channel. I think it will be uh, very handy and, uh, and well put to use. One of the concerns I have is that he's right footed, I think not left footed. I didn't see him from memory doing anything really with his left foot. And so how does that work with Romero there? Is he going to be used as a kind of utility player, a squad rotation player that is there to kind of take Davinson Sanchez's place in the squad? Or is he being brought in with the intentions of walking into the first team? And if so, are we going to have a right-footed player playing at left-sided centre-back? Are we going to um, move Romero over there? Time will tell, not entirely sure. I don't even know if the story is true, but the reports suggest that the deal is done. So I thought I'd bring it to your attention and let me know your thoughts. If you follow the Turkish football, if you check them out, what do you think about Victor Nelson? Do you like him? 
Is he someone that you uh, would be happy to bring in? Do you think it's good value for money? 20 million quid. Defenders are certainly players we need in bulk this summer. And he might just be the first one, hopefully, of a couple, two or three that could come in. You know, we, you know who else I like. Bella Kotchap uh, is one. And there's a whole bunch of players with higher caliber names, higher brand names than either of those two that I've just mentioned. And uh, maybe we can get one of those as well. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on the next live stream, either tomorrow or if not on my channel, you'll see me somewhere else, no doubt, very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, guys, bye-bye. <laughs>